thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, Linda Upmeyer mentioned uh, stuff that dies at the door of the Senate. There's nothing you can do more than help uh, Jack Whitker and me gain the Iowa Senate in 2016 so we can get some good work done. I'm going to take a little different approach to uh, this topic today. Many times the topic of abortion is not just discussed in abstract clinical or political terms. But the reality is that every time a decision is made on abortion, there are intensely personal and emotional components. So I want to tell you the story of Dustin Jake. Dustin was conceived in late 1986 in Rochester, Minnesota by his mother, Christy, and a father who denied any responsibility. Christy's circumstances were difficult. She was 15 years old, drinking heavily, using every drug she could get her hands on. She was pregnant with no husband and had been kicked out of her house. In the judgment of Eddie, the best option would have been to terminate the pregnancy, and she may well have been advised to do that. But Christy found another path. She found her way from Rochester to a place called the Lighthouse in Kansas City. The Lighthouse is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to provide a home, prenatal care, work training, counseling, and delivery services to young, scared girls like Christy. About half the children at the light, born at the lighthouse go home with their mother, and the other half are put up for adoption. None are aborted. After Justin Jake was born in August of 1987, Christy went back home to Rochester with her new baby. She cared for Dustin for three months, and she decided she could not raise this child on her own. She was only 16. So she went back to the lighthouse for about a month where they counseled her in the agonizing process of giving Dustin Jake up for adoption. She chose an adoptive family and returned to her home. The adopting parents were delighted to, with their baby son. Finally, having a second child, they so desperately wanted to complete their family. They named him Matthew Eli. Matt, like his big sister, was a delightful baby. Unlike his big sister, Matt was a difficult child to raise. He was not troublesome, but he really didn't like school very much. Every day for school, to get him to school was a, was, a, uh, was a battle for both his mother and father. He got passing grades, but it was a struggle for him, and even more so for his parents. All Matt ever wanted to do was join the U.S. Army. His mother didn't like that idea very much, but his father said, well, if you're going to be a soldier, be a good soldier. He joined the Army in 2008, and after basic training in AIT, he graduated from jump school in Fort Benning, Georgia. At last, Matt was a trained Army paratrooper. Matt spent six years in the Army, mostly in Alaska, with two tours of duty in Afghanistan. He now works in the North Slope of Alaska because he fell in love with the state when he was stationed there. As some of you in this crowd know, my wife and I have another name for Matt. We call him our son. And the reason I'm telling you this story is really quite simple. Matt is an able-bodied, tax-paying citizen that proudly served his country because the lighthouse in Kansas City provided a better alternative for Christie's difficult situations. They provided a home for a young, scared, addicted, pregnant teenage girl. They took care of her prenatal needs, her delivery, her emotional needs, and her baby. Then they identified a family that could raise her son. Two years ago, Matt and his wife, Whitney, began their search to find Christie, Matt's birth mother. One Tuesday night in February, of 2013, my wife called me here in Des Moines to tell me to look at an email. And there, for the first time, I saw the face of Christy. On the following day, Wednesday, Whitney called me to tell me 
she had talked to Christy over the phone. On Thursday, Valentine's Day, Matt called his birth mother. And when she answered the phone, instead of hearing the silent, haunting voice of an unborn baby that she might have terminated 25 years earlier, she heard the strong voice of her firstborn son. Then Matt called his adoptive mother and thanked her and me for adopting him. I hope you take two lessons from my brief history of Dustin Jake. First, the next time an abortion advocate tries to tell you that difficult circumstances justify the death sentence for an unborn baby, I want you to tell them the story of Dustin Jake or tell them and come talk to me. Number two, the value of the unborn baby is not expressed in the sum of body parts. It is expressed in life itself. Thank you.